गुड मॉर्निंग एन इट आई स्टार्टेड एज अ कथक डांसर आई कम फ्रॉम गुजरात एंड वेन आई वॉज लर्निंग कथक एंड आफ्टर लर्निंग परफॉर्मिंग फॉर मैनी ईयर्स आई वॉज विद कुमुद्दीन इलाखिया फॉर एटीन ईयर्स एंड आई वॉज अ सोलो डांसर एट द सेम टाइम प्रिंसिपल डांसर इन कुमुद्दीन इलाखिया कंपनी कॉल्ड कदम I when I started working in Kathak on my own as a solo dancer I felt that I needed something else I wanted to expand my understanding of movement I wanted to do um something which comes from me I didn't I did not know what it is and how it is and where it will begin but there was a seed inside me that i wanted to do something different than what i'm doing and how i can contribute to dance in in my own way not following the footsteps of what i have learned from kumudini i had also learned kathak from other teachers like mohan rao kalyan pulkar durga lal ji birju maharaj ji and during this this uh, this search uh, i had come to delhi to learn chhau which is a martial dance from orissa chhau and my teacher guru krishna chandra nayak his love for me uh, completely changed me and opened my horizon uh, in in expanding what i was dreaming of i thought you know something uh, is nurturing my thoughts and my imagination um during that time uh, i started dancing uh, uh, solo kathak and then uh, at the end of kathak recital few items of chhau so that's how my career began and during that time i met devisro in delhi who was studying uh, temple music called drupad and we got married and then for the first time in 2086 there was a kathak mahotsav festival in which i was invited to perform and without telling anybody we did an experimental piece on one of the seasons of antonio vivaldi's summer yeah from four seasons for from four seasons <clears throat> and that totally changed everything because when we performed that one it was like a riot i have Up to say it changed things in many ways you should one didn't anticipate <laughs> because it actually effectively closed one door uh, the kathak establishment was so upset with her that she danced in a black costume which is not done in india and she danced to western music which which hadn't been done but it was also in a kathak festival and she hadn't told them she was going to do this otherwise they she knew that they wouldn't give permission if she told them yes and, and how, how did that impact the rest of your work did that have see then what yeah because the the reaction of the people I, uh, that uh, i realized that they are they are thirsty for something different something new something innovative something more imaginative so that Hang on, can i just explain yeah. the reaction of the people was quite extraordinary dakshas there was actually several young dancers performing and after dakshas there was swasp saraswati sen and then there was intermission and it the audience were so uh vocal <laughs> i mean people rushed onto the stage yeah 300 people and came and they had to actually stage. announce intermission because it was a bit of a riot on stage nobody could perform after that which made the teachers the gurus extremely angry but the because thing, the public reaction was extraordinary and that that was in delhi that was in that delhi that was in delhi Kamani, in kamani, kamani theater <laughs> that gave me and they an idea that people are hungry well it really certainly reinforced that that there is a real need for people to to if, if not break the tradition at least to expand it because dakshi was dancing kathak 
the thing is that she, uh, Katak, okay, traditionally the, the pirouettes are always in one direction. But of course, in, you know, you can pirouette both ways. So Daksha spent like six months training herself to pirouette both ways. Way. How many yeah. ways can you pirouette? It's, I mean, in Katak, it's one traditional way. But she discovered that, I mean, so many ways that you can pirouette. So it, it and and so basically it was all katak but extensions of katak. Yes, yes. And also what I also I did was traditional katak. I danced on teka. No, teka no hang on, hang on, you're not yeah. explaining. So, sorry. Before <laughs> she did the four seasons, first of all she did. Um, she was given uh, 15, 15 uh, minutes, no, 20, 15. 20, 20, 25 minutes, whatever it was, her slot. So the first half she danced uh, drupad. Uh, in um, 40 Matra Tao, which of course it, it's it's very difficult. It's uh, it's considered like one of the, the hardest Tao's to dance. But Daksha also, because she was stupid enough to have me playing Pakawaj, I had learned some some Pakawaj. I was not a very good Pakawaji, but I had a nice tone. I couldn't play fast, but Pakawaj is like the bass drum anyhow. So if you can play, if you can keep a good a good tempo, if you can maintain your your your, your tempo, then we had a, a tabla player. He did all the fills, so basically I gave the teka. Um, and sa sarangi. But in this particular yeah. case, um, the tabla player wasn't available, so it ended up just with me playing teka and a beautiful sarangi player, which was very challenging because actually a katak dancer normally, she relies to some extent on the tabla player giving, he plays every single thing that she dances. Mm. And in this case, Daksha was naked. There was no one to play what she was dancing. So it was quite tough. I had prepared for months to do that 15 so minutes. That, so yeah. in a way, she took the tradition and did it in a way which most people wouldn't have the guts to do it because it's really confronting. So at, at that time, this was sort of a very radical experiment which had not been done yet. No. Okay. Okay. Both in and tradition also, traditional and, the... and go beyond tradition in a different imagination. Also not done. But it was the second one that really upset the gurus. The first so, one they so, could accept. So that, this, first, this first experience was a sort of breakthrough for, for you as well. For you know, our we, mental, oh, yeah. uh, we understood yeah. that, you know, that was actually the seed in us. That And first time we realized that we work as a team is fantastic. Yeah. We are both, uh, and Davis Rowe, is, his background is music. He's a comp he also had not yet started composing music. He was learning music. He also didn't know that he had capacity to compose. I didn't know that I had the capacity to choreograph. I have to right. say that when we got together, it had nothing to do with art. It was strictly <laughs> hormones. <laughs> <laughs> That's your intimate life. Okay. Fine. 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 Okay, let's proceed. So... So you had this very striking first experience, and when did you come and live in Kerala, and why? Yeah, okay, so what happened that I started searching that uh, uh, Chao is there in my life, and I was having actually a lot of pains from Kathak to Chao, and not understanding in those days anything about how to prepare your body, with uh, exercise and award. So my, I'm always searching and looking for some training for my body so that I can actually be m m more less in pain and more enjoy. So my whole search for my own well-being, I came across uh, in Manipur, there was a martial art um, conference and uh, Somebody, Kalari Paithu person was there, Krishna from Chavakkad, and he demonstration Kalari Paithu. And I said, what is this? This is so fantastic. This will help me to rejuvenate and make myself strong. So I immediately talked to him, and within no time, I'm in Kerala. Okay. Yeah, in, in Chavakkad, my first training was with him. And then uh, I realized that, um, uh, let me start researching that who else is there and where should I actually le learn because already we have two small children. So w how we four will be able to uh, stay in a place where 
children are looked after, my training is looked after. So doing in this research trip, I came across in Trivandrum to CV and Kalari and where I met uh, Guru Govindan Kuti and uh, Satyan Narayan. So, and I found that uh, Guruji, uh, Gurukal and Satyan were so wonderful and also I could talk to them because they are so intelligent and and understand when I am asking questions, we are able to have a dialogue because I was not looking at to pra becoming a Kalaripai to practitioner, but I wanted to for my own knowledge, understanding and how to imbibe Kathakali training so that when I teach dance or when I have what I have gone through with so much pain, when I teach my students don't have to go through it. So, so it was actually learning to uh, to learn Kathak uh, Kalari Paitu was one reason. Secondly, Dev and I were wanting to do something on snake worship. So that was also our another research uh, on snake worship. So you know, oh, actually, two Manar things. Sala. Also on on uh, one of the first shows that we did was Yagna, which was on the. the Vedic uh, chanting. Vedic, oh, well, with Vedic chanting and also, of course, the, you know, the whole Yagna tradition is much stronger in the South. I mean, it's very strong here. So, but, but the other thing, I, one thing I'd like to, to add about CV and Kalari and, and the Satyan and, and Gurukul was that, um, in a way, uh, because, because Daksha and I both love Indian traditions, I think the same as you do. I mean, you love Katakali. Um, and, and I'm sure other traditions as well. So it's really important to us that you don't just destroy the traditions. That what Sachin said was really beautiful. Sachin said, we will maintain the tradition because that is our lineage. If you want to expand on it, if you want to take it in a new direction, that's your, uh, same with you. I don't think you'd be wanting to change Katakali if it was an endangered species. Then you'd say, let's just, let's just preserve it. But because it has a strong base, then you can say, okay, the base is strong, and now I have a role that I can add. I can divert it a little bit. So and it's exactly the same thing. Also, another thing, I never learned anything so that I can use, grab, and just steal one movement, second movement, and put it in different sequences in my dance. For me, I just wanted to learn and understand and imbibe in my system, in my physical body, that automatically it will help me to become healthy, more energetic, understanding of the centers, energy, everything. And then if it naturally flows it, uh, from through me, it's all right, but I'm not going to put Kalari Paitu on stage. It's, yes. not a, it's not a cosmetic thing. It's not something that you just add to your dance as a little effect. It's actually that it has to become part of you. Yes. And then it's, 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 it expresses itself in a totally spontaneous and natural way. So first we decided let's come here for two, three years and study. And then we will take our next step where we will go. And so happened that um, we ca <laughs> came across this lake and one of my uh, student and dancer, he showed me and uh, obviously uh, my mother offered her help to buy the place for us. And, and it was extremely how, cheap in those yeah, days, it's yeah. incredibly cheap. Yeah. Those days uh, sure. yeah. So that's how we, we this became our home. Right. Uh, yeah. Okay. So what happened when I came here, as you know, a woman coming from outside. Who is a foreigner. Who is a foreigner in a rural area who doesn't speak a word of Malayalam. So it was a little bit harder for me, uh, but I started, um, you know, getting young boys to come. Obviously the girls, in the city I had a couple of girls when, when I was learning uh, 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 in the city in the beginning, I had a couple of girls who were from close by uh, places who had uh, some Bharatnatyam background. Uh, I always chose dancers who came from some discipline of classical dance because, and especially I liked uh, Bharatnatyam very much. 
for me, one of my dancers was had a Kathakali training. So for me, Kathakali having a Kathakali dancer was also very interesting for me. Uh, so I slowly started uh, to uh, uh, getting the group together. I had also a small grant from Ministry of Culture uh, for for experimenting. Uh, so that was a little help, and. Um, and soon what we started creating and we started getting actually good amount of performances which was over India all over India and abroad so we realized so almost we actually sustained our group and I employed people throughout the year it was not for a project project from almost 93 till 2015 I was employing dancers throughout the year. Full time, with 24-hour insurance for them yeah. and their families. And that was I, Actually, I, I, have to, I have to say there's some quite unique things about the Duchess Shet Dance Company. One is that it's run by a woman, <laughs> uh, where the company has largely been male dancers, with the only women being Duchess and then our daughter, uh, and a few other women, but no one ever stayed very long. Uh, um, secondly, uh, yeah, it's, it's a rural a contemporary dance company but based in in rural environment which again is not so common uh, thirdly uh, unlike particularly unlike in the west where if you have a company the only fully employed person generally is the admin and dancers are brought in uh, casually for on a project base ours was the total reverse we've never had an admin we have to be our own admin but our dancers are fully employed and that includes 24-hour insurance for them and their families uh, uh, and that when some of our dancers have been with us for 15 so years. So it's quite, uh, it, uh, support our company through performances. And it's mainly done through performances. So there's another very clever system that we had, whereas the government system, the government gives a very small stipend, but that becomes the retainer. Basically, everybody gets their retainer, which is enough for them to, to just get by. But what is retainer? Retainer, retainer means every month you get. Whether we perform, you don't perform. They get that money is... And guaranteed. That's, that's guaranteed. actually guaranteed. based on rehearsals. Uh, is, it, is it still the case? No, now no, 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 no. I have now started a different model because I want to also have freedom to move. Otherwise, I I am actually completely Absolutely confined lockdown. here, yeah. which I thought uh, now I need to have a free time. She, she needed she needed a break. <laughs> now um, to, to finish on that, amongst your dancers. Uh, have some of them followed steps and oh, yes, uh, created yes. their own work? Yeah, and yeah. 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 I'm very proud uh, that uh, my uh, uh, this Kathakali dancer, who also physically very strong, because we do a lot of aerial work. And not just aerial, the kind of work we do is physically so demanding and challenging and it's totally new to our bodies and we experiment on so many levels. So. Uh, Rajesh, his name is Rajesh Ravindran from Koilon. So he has now in his own house, he has made a studio and he's teaching all the village children and he has almost more than 100 students now. He's also doing aerial work, he's experimenting and also doing what we have done. So, but um, he has his own company. My another uh, senior dancer, who, and Ram Rajesh is with me since last almost from 98. So almost 20 years I have the same dancer. Ramesh Ram, uh, who is also clo from close by, from Naima Maria, uh, he's with me since 15 years. He runs a very successful um, dance company with all the rural children and he takes classes here four days a week. He, he runs here in the afternoon after the uh, school is over um, and he does he is my one of my most creative and imaginative dancer he's a good choreographer and i'm very proud of him and all the dancers who have learned from me have continued to dance and expand my training they in have, a different and they way. have their own schools and they have some, they have their yeah. own companies and one of my dancers who came from mumbai called Ur Urmi Kothari, has taken her 
because she did yoga and kalari paitu and you know lot of martial training with aerial she has made a whole system a career actually. career uh, of making our whole a whole system of training bodies and she is now training you know film actors and runners and athletes and so i am very proud that she took dance training and performing experience into a totally different area then i have another student called meera shah who has married is there like all the women are ne- ne- none of them were ever locals the ones who did come were either from amdabad bombay bangalore yeah. not local girls and meera shah because she he she started helping me for administration she got a job in new york to run to be an administrator in a in a for a dance company in my uh, in new york so <laughs> i'm so happy you can be proud yeah yeah you i'm can. very proud that all my people who yeah. have learned dance have explored and expanded in a different way uh, my another student who is actu- her name is um, nanita praveen she is an architect by profession and uh, from hyderabad uh, hyderabad so, <laughs> so she is running another school in hyderabad so you know it's all different parts of india i think what and makes uh, both of us proudest of all is where if if dancers leave and simply reorganize what you have done with them over a period of 5 or 10 years and simply just regurgitate that they call it their own work basic copying yeah, yeah but instead of abc you do cba or bca but you basically just reorganize the material the 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 ones who are really significant are the ones who take what you've done and then transform it and it's not daksha shit's work it's their own work and, and that makes me very proud you see the you see the the influence of daksha but it, it's it's not a copy this is this is something which is genuine and that's beautiful is uh, till so far uh, and it i have lived and worked so intensely here for years and years so for me to um, i must say i i admire atakalari jai very much for what he is doing and what he is promoting is fantastic gati is doing amazing work and uh, there are lot of people uh, in india are now doing contemporary work and i think everybody is is exploring in their own way unfortunately i don't have uh, much connection because i am very much here and this this environment is very difficult for me to go and search and i am very happy uh, each of our work like shiv shakti took us two and a half years just to develop the show Well, and and th- that, that has to be explained. Why does it take so long? Basically, in every production we've ever done, the object has been to to challenge ourselves to do something that we have never done. That we have to break a new ground, or it's not so interesting. And so, generally, in terms of theme, whatever the subject is, it'll be a theme that we don't know much about that we're interested in. Like it was Yagna, it was snakes, it was circus. Uh, circus came out of the fact that when Dutch just when we started doing rope work. one of the critics said this is terrible it's just circus so we said okay if you think that circus then the next show we called it the circus of earth and sky and it was really it was you know okay we don't care what you call us but we're going to keep on doing what we like doing anyhow mm-hmm. oh yeah so basically each production has been a, has been a way of learning because we 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 teach ourselves by by mm-hmm. by the work we do uh, so so basically every show daksha was challenged to to work with a different indigenous tradition and see how she could imbibe that into her own body and then create something new out of that my challenge was always to create music yes. which was different uh, if you look at every one of our productions it doesn't look like the same company uh, the sound is not the same uh, basically uh, because there was no one to light then i had to learn how to light uh, so i became the light designer i became the set designer i became the technical director uh, as well we, as the composer we also make our own sets everything here yeah it's a self-contained company basically yeah. everything and everything is low cost 
uh, everything has to be low cost because that's survival. <laughs> well, I mean, for me, it was, for me, it was actually a nice coincidence um, because uh, when, when Daksha and I got together, uh, actually neither of us had any idea. Uh, I mean, I knew she was a dancer, but I didn't realize that she was such a good dancer. And she probably knew I was a student of Drupad, uh, and that's about all <laughs> I was at those days. <clears throat> I had wanted to compose when I was young, and then going to university it gave me a complete mental block because it was so academic, and I found it. it um, my connection to music has always been a very emotional one, and in those days it was Stockhausen and all this kind of stuff. Boulet, sorry, but <laughs> and I couldn't handle it at all. I thought it was just, yeah, it wasn't my cup of tea. So, um, so basically, uh, basically, dance gave me an entry through the back door. Because in the beginning, for example, Four Seasons, it was just that, you know, I chose an existing piece of music. Um, but then... Very uh, soon we just started... Well, then it became, own, it became evident that we, we needed to have our own music. So, yeah, so I started to have to write the music. And in the process of doing that for different productions, my own experience as a composer and my, my skill set expanded. Actions, yes. Uh, we have tried to uh, do collaborations with uh, uh, with uh, some foreign companies. It's not easy, uh, and till so far we have done. I won't say that uh, we. I was very satisfied in the sense that the time period is so short, and you have to just squeeze in what you know, and that was not very exciting. Like right now, we are doing co-producing a show in Australia with Aboriginal Dance Company. But um, it's it's quite a challenging uh, job uh, to particularly for us because see the thing with us is that we never had much money, but time we had, so we could spend. I mean, it's not that we spent continuously two two or three years working on a thing, but while we're performing other works, we we're always creating a new show over a period of years. And, and if you're trying to evolve a new movement language, it takes years to, to change the body into working in a different way. Aerial work, it's not something that you, know, you can just pick up. It, you have to really develop the muscles, you have to develop the calluses, you have to develop tolerance for pain, all sorts of things have to be developed. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so, and, and generally with collaborations, it's like six weeks and you've got to create something. And what that really means is that you do what you normally do they do what they normally do, and you throw the, both of them on the stage. And I don't find that a particularly interesting process. I think, uh, you know, where, where, where people work together over a long period of time, then something mm. which is not just uh, a mix and mash of what, what each does, but something which is unique can, can happen. But there's no substitute for time, I don't think. One, one point I would like to make is that both of us, I think we are very lucky to have very talented dancers to experiment. Mm. Uh, and dedicated dedic dancers. Dedicated and to work six days a week is not an easy job. Uh, and especially when my daughter came into dance, uh, she actually helped us because she is physically also very strong that gave us a whole new horizon and, and, and the possibility well, of experiment. Well, also our male dancers are thin and very strong. Yeah. And suddenly there's a thin female dancer who's also very strong. Yeah. And that transforms what you can do. Yeah, and then our son came who actually brought different energy because he's a fantastic drummer, uh, performer and a composer. And I have an in-house <laughs> composers, two composers in the house. So that's actually, we are, it's actually And we blessing. can have great fights over it all. Yeah. <laughs> that's the creative It is, it is. Yeah. yeah, sometimes the fights are very intense. So this intense. way I would say that uh, we are blessed <laughs> to have so many elements just coming together. And for that I'm very thankful to the destiny that uh, opportunity that destiny has given us well, so thank you we learned on that thank you thank, thank you, you annette thank you helen thank you thank you, thank you, thank so you.